Hi, ladies. This is Gata. It is Monday, June 1st. Um, talk about anxiety. Oh, my computer wasn't working. And really, like last second, I got this Zoom to work. I had to install so many things because they had an update. But anyway, we're here. Uh, we have more people joining us. Um, crazy. I am doing this interview from Philly today. Um, you know, all this is crazy for our industry to begin with. And now it's another add on. You know, it's um, a few months ago when the whole shutdown happened. I was nervous, uh, like everybody else was, about their business and how everything was going. But, you know, thankfully, I see a lot of you going back to work. And the reason I wanted to start this webinar series is I am so proud of seeing all our customers actually thrive during this time. So, you know, when I thought everything was going to crash, I was so happy and excited to see all the orders coming in. Uh, if you're new to my skin buddy, uh, I've been around since 2016, so it's been four years. Uh, I've always done dropship direct for my clients because I'm in the mindset of, you know, I'll work hard and you profit. So it's more like a team effort here. Uh, so during this time, this dropship direct paid off. And I'm so happy to see that you guys are still generating revenue. And I also want to start this series because I feel like sharing is caring to me. I'm always in the mindset of I'm happy to give my secrets and my blueprint to anyone who asks for it. Because at the end of the day, um, I think it can help a lot of people. But also, I'm not afraid of someone stealing my formula. Because at the end of the day, it's all about hard work, consistency, and if you don't take my blueprint and go with it, it's still not gonna work for you. So, uh, I'm gonna start this webinar series with one of my MSB rock stars. I've been watching her. She's been with me for almost three years or a little more. Uh, her name is Julie Stubler. Uh, I think you can learn a lot from her. Um, and I'm gonna bring her on. So Julie, uh, turn your video on and let's get started. Sorry, you guys. I'm like so antsy right now because I should really last minute trying to put this on. Um, Julie, Got it. Can I, you hear me? Can. Um, disable my camera. Okay. Do I have to do that too? Okay, hold on. Let me do that for you. Um, I'm going to make you a co-host. Okay, let's do that. See if that'll work for you, Julie. Hi. Hey, you look so pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Gada. You look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I had I was almost going to do this from my phone, and it just kept like smashing. I, like, I'm going to break my phone today if this computer doesn't work. But um, so Julie, thank you for coming today. And you know, a lot of people like to sh you know hide their secrets of how they're rock stars. You've been a rock star since like day one. So background: 2016, I launched my Skin Buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, January 2016, February 4th, my dad passes away. So I actually sat on my skin buddy for a whole year. I, did, I really did the minimal. I sent out samples to people I knew. And then a year later, when I, you know, when I really started skin buddy, that's really when you found out about it. Um, so tell us how you found out my, about my skin buddy and what made you go for it. Well, thank you. Um, and to everyone who's listening, just to let you know, I'm also a, a licensed cosmetology teacher. So where Goddess says that sharing is caring, that's all I did for 27 years of my career is I educated others. So that definitely is something to remember. But I was listening to um, Shelly Hancock's, one of her podcasts or something. And I do that when I clean. I turn on a good podcast and she said something about saving your hands and using the device. And I reached out to you because I, I knew you from your formal, formal uh, position. And I reached out to you and we arranged for you to come to the med spa. And I think within 10 seconds of your demonstration, we realized that we can incorporate this in all of our facials. So I remember purchasing a unit for each one of the girls. 
So not only do they want to use it for themselves, estheticians, we're real divas and very particular about what we use on our face and our skin, as well as our clients. And I could see in the girl's eyes that they wanted one for themselves. So we started working with the device and then luckily you live so close to me that we could actually have more of a relationship. So that was fun. So yeah, so Julie's actually the first person I ever, like I really didn't go door to door to any spa. Julie was like the first spa I actually went to. Um, that whole year after my dad passed away, it was really hard for me to visit anyone. It was really just from the comfort of my home and bed, really, right? So mm -hmm. I went to visit Julie and your staff was amazing. You, Your daughter, Victoria, is gorgeous like you. You guys actually look like sisters. Um, <laughs> Julie, tell everybody your age, if that's okay. I mean, you're just gorgeous. Like you're, well, thank you're you. gorgeous. Well, yeah. thank you. I do. I have four children. So Victoria, who never looked like me, hit her late teens and into her early young women years. And she is the spinning image. So I always laugh when people say that we could be sisters. I go, I'll take it. Because she's, you know, in her 20s. I go, if she wants to look like a almost 50-year-old grandma. That's, that's on her. So... It is amazing, though, how much she resembles me. She never looked like me when she was growing up. So she's, she really is. And she's really blossomed into a specialist herself. So I, again, never thought my children would get into the beauty and the barber industry. And sometimes I, I can't believe it. They're both business owners. And Victoria found a way to also use the device. And, and using the device, clients want it right away. So... Yeah, you got to meet her. Yeah, so I went to Julie's spa, I did the demo, and then really it was like, within one week, Julie sends me a message. She's like, I need more, I need a hundred. And I'm like, <laughs> what? This lady yeah. wants a hundred. This is at the time when really I was working out of my house, like my mom's yeah. house. Yeah. I was shipping out of my, my mom's garage. UPS was coming to pick up from the garage. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I need it now. I'm like, well, it's gonna take me a few days to ship. She's like, I don't have time. I was, like, I was like, well, if you want to drive over, come on. She's like, okay, I get off at six. I'll be there at seven mm -hmm. and I'll come pick it up. And I think you came over and my mom was like, oh, I make her something nice. I, think she fed, I don't know what she fed you that day, but you ended up staying to like 10, 11 at night that night. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, it was so this, but what we, one of the things that I've learned to do in my practice, because clients are savvy, is incorporate what I call a case study. And that's how we ended up needing so many units. And to be honest with you, I never thought that clients were going to have this incredible interest in wanting a unit for themselves. So we were just going to incorporate it to see what the before, during, and afters were going to look like. Because that's basically what a study is, before, during, and after. And that is just one of my creative ways to launch something new, is to do a case study. Well, Lisa Kosip, who is another... Uh, expert esthetician, we were all on board. So Victoria, myself, Nicole was also another esthetician, and we were booking these free clinical trials. So we came up with an intake form, we came up with their concerns, and the clients saw a noticeable improvement within. And I'll never forget one of my clients left and came back, and she was sitting there, and I said, did you leave something? And she said, no, I wanna buy one now. And it just, that's when I realized that clients were gadget interested and that they too wanted to do treatments at home. So they had an interest like an esthetician in caring for their skin at an optimum level. And who better to service that was an esthetician and teaching them and educating them what it is and how to use it. And boom it was just flying out the door and that's why i'm like god i need them now yeah. so it was, that, that was a long day and i remember what your mom cooked me and i was so grateful because i was starving she's the sweetest thing and your brother was there was that your brother mm -hmm. yeah my brother yes. yeah we hung out very nice oh i know and then you sent us and then julie was so sweet she sent us like a bouquet of roses so, <laughs> after. and i was like where are these roses from i was like i don't have a secret admirer uh -huh. And it was Julie. So uh, I've gotten so many flowers from my clients more than any guy in my life. So, so I love my ladies. So yes. So I think 
So from what I remember was Julie purchased almost 300 in three months. Like you sold 300 in three months Mm -hmm. um, in Skin Buddies. And I was so impressed with how you do that. And I'll tell you till this day, I talk about you to a lot of my clients and tell them how you started this case study. Um, Sometimes you do have to give some for free to get a lot back. You know, mm-hmm. so but it's all the way about how you're wording it and the way you said, I'm doing some case studies. You got on Facebook Live and you're like, we need like cases to do acne, rosacea, anti aging. And then, so what did you do in the room? Like, I want to know, like, I know that you what did that. Room. So, um, all the girls were on board. So you have to definitely have your, your team on board. And Lisa Kosa was on board, Victoria, Nicole, myself. We had a game plan. We've done these before too. So you come up with something very simple. And really you're looking for skin types and conditions. What's gonna appeal? So what is it that's going to appeal to a woman? Is it anti-aging? Is it rosacea? So when that client came in, we already had a very short intake form. And what were their concerns? So that way we knew that they already had some kind of emotional uh, concern about their skin. And whether it was rosacea or sun damage or aging, acne, they were all coming in and it was supposed to be 15 minutes. And all we did was a draping, sanitize our hands, do a cleanse. So the one product we work with is more of a soy oil base. So it's the perfect glide for the device and educate them. So I have a philosophy as an educator and as a skin specialist called CARE, C-A-R-E. And it's concern, analyze, recommend, and educate. Education is power. So as much as you want to talk to your client who may be a friend or you know personally about their life, if you put that specialist hat on and you care, so we're skin care specialists, the magic happens. You know, you educate them and education empowers them. They understood a lot of things I would do too. It was so funny. I would do the initial cleansing and whatever the last treatment product was, I would put the device on that treatment mode. And I would say, here, Gata, all I want you to do is glide the device over your skin. I'm going to go rinse my bowl and wash my hands. So it empowered them to see how easy it was to use And really, initially, the only reason I handed it to them is I had to turn my room over. (laughs) So it gave me time to clean up and go disinfect my things to get back in the treatment room. And once they had that tangible item in their hand, they wanted to go home with it. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, I didn't make time for that. So I was like, oh my God, okay, now I have to like teach them how to use it. And again, being a former educator, that is one of my most passionate things is to teach people about their skin or how a product works. And that's how it happened. And they were literally flying out. The, we were like arguing with each other because I would say that one sold and Lisa would say, well, I need two. And I was like, I need three. So that's why we kept ordering them. So we had them in stock. And that, and that alone was such genius when you told me that. And that's what I told a lot of my clients to do. I was like, oh my God, that was just genius. And you know that that trick I also use when I go to trade shows and trade events is like, mm-hmm. let them hold it till I yep. get something to clean their hands because there's something about the connection with that device. Yep. Like they're like, oh my God, they get to fall in love with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just little bit of time of them being like, oh, let me play with it while Julie gets like something to do you know it just makes them really connect with it and that's just a simple little tip that really like so that was that was it well that's what it was for me you just showed me you're like here you do it Mm -hmm. and the client has to use the device at home and a lot of times it was moms buying it for their son or daughter Mm -hmm. so and it was one way that moms passively purchased purchased it for themselves really for themselves, but for their child, because their child had problematic skin. And the greatest thing happened is many moms came back and said, I need another one. My daughter stole it. She won't give it back. So people were making this investment and I never connect, you know, the price trying to sell something. I don't do that. I suggest, and I educate, and that's up to them to see the value in it. So whatever the cost is, they have to make that decision. I'm never uncomfortable with that. So I see Lisa's on here too. So Lisa is also one of the rock stars in the last month or two. So uh-huh. 
also like I'm, I'm jumping around here, but you know, it's, it's been like a few years that we're working together, but you know, ultimately like a lot of clients will, you know, sell a lot at first and then they tap out of clients mm-hmm. sell too. So I think the issue is like, sometimes we get so comfortable selling just to our clientele that we don't, we don't really go outside of that and try to bring in new customers because we get yeah. so fully booked. Right. But yes. you, you like almost like reinvented yourself during this crazy time. Like, it's almost like, wow, Julie is really making a comeback in a crazy way. Like, mm-hmm. so we got to connect again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I listened to um, a podcast the other day and it said something that hit me and it was said as simple as, you know, when you get anxiety and panic, fall into it because you don't want to suppress it because when you mm-hmm. suppress your anxiety, you become calm and you don't act. But when you fall into anxiety and you freak out, it's going to cause you to lead to action and create stuff, right? So now every time I have a panic attack, I'm like, okay, just fall into it. What are we going to do? So Julie, I watched you in the last month and I'm watching all your orders come in and Lisa's come in and you're killing it. Like we were at 6,000. I think you're almost at 7,000 plus now just in skin buddies. You also sell other skincare lines and you have your own acne line that you created Mm -hmm. and you jumped on Facebook live and you from your bathroom in your jammies. And you're mm-hmm. just doing your nightly routine every single mm-hmm. night. And I was like, this chick is a rock star. So tell us, so before we go into how you're killing it right now, let's talk about how it hasn't been easy for Julie. Like, so everyone's mm-hmm. like, well, I'm doing this. I lost my shop, you know, mm-hmm. like, let's talk about your issue right now before we get into how awesome you're doing. Yeah. So on March 3rd, my business partner of eight years informed me that he wanted to just dissolve our partnership and that I needed to be out of our space by March 27th. So understand, we had a very powerful practice of specialists and I had no choice because the lower level where my practice was located was being demolished. He also informed me no longer wanted to be my medical director. And for whatever reason, I remember, like you said, that the, my heart was beating, but this small voice said, do not talk, do not ask any questions, just listen. Because if I would have asked questions or I would have became fearful, I knew that the conversation would have went the wrong way. Later that evening, he informed me that he was sorry to drop that on me, but he was definitely going to be going in another direction. And that he just said, you could go to your son's barbershop. And that wasn't my plan ever. I never, I love my children, but working with them in their space is not the collaboration. I couldn't sleep that night. I think that was probably one of the scariest things ever is I couldn't sleep that night because I knew what I lost. I lost something I built. And I remember waking up early, my eyes will just, I woke up and my husband, so funny, my best friend in the world. We've been together, it'll be 31 years this summer. He opened the bedroom door, he said, get on your combat boots, we're going to war, we're gonna find another shop for you. And I was just sad, just sad. But this little voice just kept saying, believe, believe. And it was just the most incredible whisper. And I have to tell you that the loud noises can make you make the wrong decision. The whispers are the voice of confidence and power. And I believed it. I knew I needed my power back sharing the partnership with someone else, I lost my power and I knew that. So here I had this chance. We found a location within 16 hours. My husband immediately started the renovations and then on March 17, you know, we learned of the quarantines. And I think what happened was the sad part is when our governor decided to have the shelter quarantine in place again, I got so sad because this passion project that I had for this new location, and Lisa Kosep is near and dear to me. She's one of my best girlfriends. That's why I call myself the beauty buff because the BFF changed a buff one day. So in any event, I just I got really sad. And my little sister, 
and her name is Rona. So you know how they've been hashtagging the coronavirus, hashtag Rona. She said, my skin is a mess. She's an essential worker. And she said, please tell me what to do on my skin. And again, I was kind of spiraling down, getting sad. She told me what she, was, what she wasn't doing. And I said, you have to wash your face. So I gave her some product. And within like six minutes, she called me back and said, Julie, you have to go to Facebook. You have to tell everybody how to wash their face. Like if their experience went on, Julie, you have to do it. Please do it. Will you go to Facebook and tell everybody what you do? And I said, no. I go, I don't, I don't feel so glamorous. I said, you know, these beauty influencers are perfect. They're beautiful. They have gorgeous smiles. And she goes, Julie, it doesn't matter. Julie, please just go on Facebook. And that's what I did. In fact, I remember doing one live with my shower cap on because that's, that's how I cleanse my face. And this response was so genuinely overwhelming. People wanted to know how they could get the device and they wanted the product. One of my classmates from third grade, a guy, wanted two. I went two of everything, Julie. I never anticipated people to want, and I understand, is I was caring I was educating. I was giving them my genuine skincare regimen, educating every move, showing them the bags under my eyes, the sunspots, the creases in my neck, and it connected with people. So it allowed me to believe in myself again so much. It gave me like, it, it gave me a power back that I got so excited every night to go in front of that camera. Like, because now I have this little following of people and they learn something new. I didn't realize that people didn't know how to wash their face. I just didn't realize they didn't know how to care about themselves. And throughout this pandemic, we saw videos and remember the blue paint on the back of the hands? We watched that, but there's also so much bacteria on the face. And now they're calling it mask, mask me from the, so who better to educate these people, but true skincare specialists. And I sit on these videos and I shout out to all the estheticians I know that are, or I train. I don't make it about me. I make it about taking care of your skin. And this is what I do. And people love the lights. They call them the light show. <laughs> how do I get a light show? And it's funny, not, they don't always ask how much it costs. They just want one. So I just say, what's your address? It's that simple. I agree. And, you know, it's, um, you know, I talk to a lot of estheticians and I, I come across so many different personalities and, you know, ultimately it comes to, you know, the skin, like it's such a vulnerable area. Like you really, like when I come to you, like I want to get fixed, like there's mm -hmm. no price on my skin, you know, like I always say, thank God for women because I'm watching all my estheticians go back to work. And I love how they're saying, you know, some are a few weeks booked up, few months booked up already. Like, you know, it, when it comes to beauty and care, like women really care about that because it's, it's not about vanity. It's about like confidence. And, mm -hmm. you know, so for us, like we like to allocate our money if we have a limited amount to yeah. some things that make us happy and that's skin, hair, health. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. and with you, I know, Julie, we talked and you even said that you're like, you know, I'm not that young influencer. Like, who's going to watch me? And I'm like, you know, like I'm watching the industry and the ladies that are killing it are the Mick Jaggers of the skincare world. And I'm not saying you're a cokehead and you're old, <laughs> but, wizard, but I'm saying you have skin in the game, you know, no pun intended, but you know, if I want to go get something done, I want to go to someone that's been around, like that has expertise. I mean, you're an educator, like, and you come from a place of like genuine service and caring. Like I can feel that with you. And I think anybody that's watching, you know, if you come from a genuine place, I don't care if you sell, like you sell a hundred grand worth of retail. If you're not genuine, it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. um, you can only take that so far till people figure out your true personality and your intention. <laughs> And with you, I mean, Julie, how long have you been in the skincare world? Like, how did you even get into skincare to begin? Um, so I started the industry when I was 15, literally. I worked at the local corner beauty shop and went to cosmetology school. And that was in the 80s. And everybody needed a haircut in my neighborhood. So I started cutting hair. The thing about skincare and what appealed to me most is that it was a niche. It was a specialty. 
And then um, I did work in a hair salon for a period of time. I was a terrible hairstylist, but it didn't matter because the haircuts were all layered and spiky hair, it didn't matter. Um, it was when I worked in an operating room and I did that for three years and I realized that physicians, medical doctors will carve out a specialty and then it hit me. I always had an interest in skincare. I went back to school for my teacher's license and it was a long day, very long day. And it was the most exciting time in my career, in my life. To go back to school, I felt so empowered. And when I went back for my teacher's license, they asked which class would I want to go into when I sat in the aesthetics classroom. So this was in 1991. Christine Valme influenced very European, very advanced skincare that they don't even teach this any longer. And I literally thought the teacher was absolutely the worst educator in the world, but I was in love with her because she was sharing this information that really connected with me. And when I finished my hours, I approached the director and said, if you ever need a teacher, let me know. I would love to teach. And they said, sit down. I thought I was out. I thought I was going to get in trouble. I really did the way she said, shut my door and have a seat. And I thought, oh gosh, was I out of line. School back then was very professional. I mean, you almost wore like a nursing's uniform, no gum chewing. And they offered me a teaching position at the worst rate possible. And I could not believe they were willing to pay me. So not only did they pay me $6 an hour, they trained me. And that company, they literally drove me or flew me to the top icons of today in this industry to have one-on-ones. So I was teaching at 21 years old in the recession in the 90s to women who lost their job. So, you know, I think now that I'm 50, I couldn't imagine walking into a classroom and this girl who looks 14 was going to teach me. So I had to knock their socks off and I love the classroom. So I have the pleasure and joy of teaching hundreds on hundreds of estheticians. So not just in PA, but I was an educator for the U.S. for three years and I watched the spa boom. And I, estheticians are wonderful wonderful women. They're just focused and they want to be the specialist. So for those of you that are listening, here's something I always say. Before you can become the specialist, understand you have to become the therapist and care. You have to care. You can't present yourself as this expert. It takes years. You know, so there was mentors. There were humbling experiences for me. And, you know, all I did through this pandemic was listen to podcasts, watch webinars. I did not watch the Ozarks. I did watch one episode of the Tiger Person, but I stayed away. I lost weight because I worked out and I just kept strong. Again, I had a passion project. I wanted to get back into the treatment room. And the best way I got back in the treatment room was going into people's bathrooms by doing these Facebook lives and educating people what skin care, again, care is. You did. I mean, like, I am so addicted to watching you. Like, uh, when I get the notification that says Julie's live, like, I'm like, you know, it's crazy how every night you get to make it different. You know, it's not, I, okay, she's going to pull out today. <laughs> I, I try to switch it up. Um, I, what, what's fun is, again, locally where I live, you know, I watched people build all of these med spas. And I watched where I was located, five practices built around me. And my former partner really never felt threatened, but I saw in our business numbers, we weren't growing. I'm really scared for some of these practices and some of the estheticians because you really have to have a client base that's going to support you and want to come back to you where a lot of the places are very gift certificate oriented. So I'm really curious to see what comes out of this, yeah. you know, so I was also able to connect with people. And again, if you are, you feel timid about going online, believe in yourself. People want to hear what you have to say. They want to know how you take care of your beautiful skin. They want to know your beauty secrets. 
And that's what I thought was fascinating is people really wanted to know, is this what you use? Is, and, and I show them every night. This, is, this was my nighttime cleansing routine. I always do it before 10 o'clock at night, always, you know? So I got to train with Dr. Peter Puglisi at a very young age and his you know, expertise really influenced me to become the best specialist I could be. And he would always say, make sure you cleanse before 10, a, uh, 10 p.m. So that's always my get ready for bed routine. But if you really feel like you want to get back out there, let your community know who you are and what you do and be vulnerable because really your skin is beautiful. It's really beautiful skin. And even if you have problematic skin, people will still connect with you on an emotional level. So women that are aging, it, it's not fun. And they connected with that process, the aging, the anti-aging process. So yeah. I, I'm, my husband, he, he just stepped in, he's gonna do some work. And now that we go out and about, people will say, I'm watching your videos, even guys. I'm watching your videos, Jules, and I just laugh. I think it's fantastic. So, Julie, you recently purchased a new um, a new space, right? Because you talked about you know your partnership um, dissolving, and now you have a new space. And then Corona hit, right? Mm -hmm. So now you had to put that on hold, and that's not easy mm -hmm. either. But you know, we were talking on the phone the other day, and I'm like, but how does it feel now? that you're making all this money in your jammies. Does that, like that, it's, I think again, this is what influencers, this is why they do this. They found this, they found this space. And a couple years ago, I really wanted to get involved in this big competition because of my expertise back, you know, I, I thought I can go in there. I, I can, I want to challenge other people. I want to see if I'm, I'm really, am I the real deal? And an esthetician, best of Philly esthetician, who's a really good friend of mine, one that I, I really did help train her as well. I'll take credit for that. Um, she made herself, but I, I was part of her training. Um, she said, you need to check out these influencers. She said, you, they're invading our space. And when I watched them, there was this glamazon effect that was intimidating to me because they're beautiful, they're perfect. So to be able to make money at home, I did not know. I'm so used to putting the appointment in the book, opening the med spa, coming in and generating an income that way. So actually having these sales blows my mind. And it, it really has changed my perspective of monetizing myself and how valuable your time can be and I really never had a game plan. I never expected that. But now I get so excited. But because my med spa's closed and there was no income coming in, my children being in this space, I, it, it scared the shit out of me because we had no income. Am I going to have to dip into my savings? And thank goodness my husband and I are savers and not spenders. Now that there's help, the help is on the way, but it wasn't there. But my husband said, just spend it, Julie. Spend it, do it. Because you have to invest in yourself somewhat for the return. And I was so afraid. And Lisa, who's listening, she knows I, does, I do this all the time. I stick stuff in the cart. I don't pay for it. My husband said, do it, do it, Julie, do it. And it like gave me again that power of placing the orders and having a purpose to come over to this space. And I visit my space every day. I visit it because I, I love it. I'm so proud of, you know, when somebody takes your power from you and you realize you let them and then you get it back. It's amazing how many people believe in you because you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't get to practice out of this space, People come to visit and I would wave to them through the window when people were scared of the, you know, the contact and I would wave back. Some people even know it was them because they had masks on and it was freezing then. And then they text me and say, it was Jen. And people were, they were buying products saying, I want to support you. Mm -hmm. That meant everything to me. And the distributors that were open, 
and that you guys made it available for us, I realized why you did that because you cared. And that's the basis of why we do this is because we care. So people would say that to me is, I want to care for my skin the way you do. And I want to support your business. And wow, what perfect timing. So, you know, that again, when I say this is a passion project, I get very emotional because I'm never going to let anyone take my power again. Never. Mm -hmm. Punch them. Punch him in the face. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you hit a, a couple key points that I was like struggling with this week too. You know, you said, your husband said, just do it. You know, like um, this is a normal thing that entrepreneurs go through is we have those moments of panic, self-doubt of mm. like, oh my God, am I going to do this? Am I going to, like every morning I wake up, like, am I going to lose my business? But you know, like you need that mm -hmm. support system. Like, you know, you're lucky to have your husband that, you know, sometimes we fall into that place of like, I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm strong enough, but you surround yourself with those people that are like, you got this, like, you've got this from the beginning, Julie, like, just go spend that money. Cause I believe that you're going to bring it back. So your husband's not like, Oh, don't touch my money. Like you're not good. Enough. You're going to ruin our savings, you know? So, so you don't said believe and you know, my kids, again, my kids are all in their 20s and the support from my kids, you know, kids can be very selfish and self-righteous and the support and the belief in me. And the other thing that I want you all to know is I don't care what other people think. Meaning when I do the Facebook lives, I don't care who's making fun of me. I don't care. I don't care if they're like, there she goes again, washing her face. Well, guess what? I... I have a business that I have to foster and build and I found a way to have a purpose. And that's what I would say on these, on the Facebook lives is I feel like I have a purpose again. I get to practice skincare and educate and the dialogue that comes out, I start having so much fun. So, you know, when I say passion project and purpose, there's your PPP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know julie you say you don't care like what people are saying is because you're really coming from a place of service and care like if deep down inside you knew you were an egomaniac and you were coming on here to become famous um of course you're going to worry about the comments right because you know truth kind of hits hits deep sometimes because you're like i am trying to get likes so but you're not, you're really just very vulnerable. You're raw, like you have no makeup on. You're like really trying to help people and you're not trying to reach the world. You're reaching your little network that's turning into a bigger network. And I think if you come from a place of genuine and service and care, you people can only love you. And if they hate you, that's their problem. That's something that they're struggling with. They're hating on you because they wanna do what you're doing, you know? So. Don't, I get don't it. I people that love you. Well, what's really fun too is a lot of my former students that are now estheticians, even other estheticians get on. And I always scold them and say, why aren't you doing this? And I'll say to them, I'm going to come in your bathroom and we're going to do a live from your bathroom. Because I think now that I get it, people want to see what experts do. You know, what does the beauty expert do, whether it's their hair, their nails, their skin, and I get it. You know, we like to watch. We have this entertainment value of voyeurism, and we want to watch. And if we know that person, and not through like the six degrees of separation, but, oh, that girl, hey, I know her, you know, or I went to school with her. So it's really interesting how I reconnected and have built this new client base by doing these lives at home and by using the, the device, the light show. <laughs> so now that, you know, we're both in Pennsylvania, so I'm in Philly and you're on the outskirts. What mm -hmm. area are you in, Julie, if you wanna tell people where to go? Um, I am right outside of Reading, Pennsylvania. So Reading, Pennsylvania, not that long ago, was the third poorest city in the United States. So I live in a little borough outside of Reading called Sinking Spring. So I'm, I'm about uh, an hour from Philadelphia, mm -hmm. not far. And you know, when I talk about you too and your, you know, your success, like I always mention that, like I mentioned that you are like, 
you know, a solo SD in a small practice. It's and okay. in an area that's not like thriving. It's not LA or Beverly Hills. So right. if you can do it, you know, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. And then, so, you know, they haven't announced when Pennsylvania is going back. I don't know if your area, are you, did you get a date yet to when you're going back? Well, so we, you know, now considering everything that's happening in Philadelphia and a whole, want to believe that Reading will not have any kind of controversy. But with that being said, Berks County, my county, is supposed to go green, uh, yellow on, fr on Friday. And then the beauty, the personalized service industry will go, we are allowed to work in the green. So we don't have a date, but I did get some kind of inside information that we may go green June 19th. Okay. But anything can change that. Okay, so you're preparing in a few weeks, you're gonna open your spa. So yep. what are your steps to going back? So I'm watching everybody go back now. Yep. Um, they're doing a great job. So what's your- What's um, our step? Yeah, and what's your plan, your personal plan now that you've hit this Facebook Live, like tapped into it? So we're, we've already been an appointment-based business. So, you know, the biggest thing for us was about disinfection and sterilization and really prevent any kind of cross-contamination. And most estheticians and any medical estheticians that work in the medical space really practice optimal disinfection and sterilization. So just making sure that we continue that, make that very visible to our clients that we're practicing that, spacing them out accordingly, which that's a little tough because you do lose a little bit, but if we can gain the trust and make sure that we have a safe space for ourselves and our clients, that's important. Um, really just stay connected with the community, let them know that what we're practicing is in their best interest and in their health. So guidelines haven't been set yet. So we can do our laser services, but I really watched how the aesthetics community was scrutinized as far as wearing facial masks. So we don't have an answer. Our state board hasn't released guidelines yet. So we're just going by the guidelines of other states. So I'm a little concerned. I'm concerned for that. And if that's the case, then it's educating them on how to take care of their skin at home and putting the right product in their hands so they can continue their skin care and by doing the, you know, using the MSB, they can do a professional grade treatment. So that's where I'm not certain what our limitations are going to be. Now, Julie, during this time, so you've done the Facebook Live to connect with clients. Like, have you done any other things to stay connected? Because like you said, you know, when we all come back to work, mm -hmm. if you're not in touch with your clients, they are going to go somewhere else. So yeah. what have you done um, in addition to that to keep them like, hey, I'm here for you. And of course, they're supporting you too. So, so emails, text messages, Facebook is so powerful. And my generation, because I'm, you know, older, we're Facebook, you know, Instagram, I really have to learn that because there's an entire audience on Instagram and I'd love to learn more about that space. But Facebook has been such a huge presence for myself and Lisa staying connected with our clients and I'm doing the Facebook lives. They really do want to maintain their skincare. So we've been taking orders and making them available for pickup. Lisa, I know, has dropped some off, but I do that. Emailing them, and emails, this is what I found right away, is I backed away from the emails and the con and our scheduling system that would throw out an email because I was being inundated. I'm sure you were at the start of the shelter of like 20 emails in like an hour. So clients didn't even realize we closed because they were so inundated with emails and social media, texting them direct. And you know, some people were really fearful of leaving their home. So when they were ready to pick up product or ship it to them, and that was really important to clients is no contact. So to have something shipped to them made them so confident and comfortable in continuing their skincare. So 
that's why getting on that platform of Facebook within my community. And the other thing I have to say is I really stay connected with my clients through Facebook. And some may agree, some may disagree, but Facebook, if you stay, and here's the what I do, I stay in my lane. I just stay in the lane where people know I'm a mom, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a skincare expert. They have no idea anything else. I just stay in that lane. So that way I don't lose a client because I offended them with a post. And I'm very cognizant of that. I, even when my youngest son, who was an athlete, I very rarely posted his accomplishments because I knew it would offend people. And I didn't want my post where I was proud of my child to lose a client. And that's how fickle, depends what kind of, you know, sometimes I'm in a mood. And, you know, there's a woman eating a donut and I don't want to be your friend anymore. <laughs> no. It's not, that's what I, I also think, Julie, I think you have to be you, right? Mm -hmm. So I think staying in your lane is one thing, but I think like, I think you attract who you are. So I think you have to be you and like not, mm -hmm. not pretend to be something more or right. different because you think that's going to attract new people. I think there's enough to go around for everybody. Uh, Absolutely. That pie. You know, I attract who I am. Like I'm goofy. I'm silly. I'm funny. Like if you're offended by my fun zone, then, you know, go somewhere else. It's okay. Like, I'm not offended yeah. if you don't like my space, but in my life, as I get older, I love peace and I chase yeah. peace more than money, even though we need money to survive, but be you because people will see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but also like you're killing it. But um, again, I wanted to say too, that you're on Facebook now. Um, if you guys are going to go on social media, you want to see where your clients are, right? So if you're younger and you have younger clients, they're probably going to be more on Instagram, right? So clients, um, more mature clients are going to be on Facebook because that's mm -hmm. where they were before and they don't want to convert to Instagram right mm -hmm. so really you're doing a good job on facebook because really most of your clientele is there um they and are will find you so you know snapchat stuff like that like i i don't benefit from snapchat because i'm not that younger crowd and and tiktok i'm not a tiktoker i don't i don't like to do videos i only do videos to um bring on people to share with you guys so i'm not comfortable in front of a camera like mm -hmm. that like so it's really more for education and service, just like you, Julie. So um, I think, but I want you to share, like, what are your top, what's your top advice to estheticians in the spa room? Like, what has made you successful? Like, besides the care, like, mm -hmm. what do you think has generated your successful business? Uh, so, well, thank you for saying that. Um, Again, being a teacher, I found that when I was educating my clients in that treatment room, they found me to be more of the specialist. And I really became proficient and knowledgeable in what I was doing. So I never tried to mimic a language that I didn't know. I never tried to do a treatment that wasn't within my realm. And I have noticed over the past few years of all of these advanced techniques and they're available on Amazon or you can watch a video. If you don't understand the injury response to that treatment and truly understand the physiological effect of that, you're not ready to perform that treatment. So whatever treatment I rendered, if it was a facial, they understood every part of that treatment and why I was doing it. So I didn't do a demonstration on the client, but I would just explain why I'm doing this. And I found that client engaging and asking more questions. So she wants to be focused on, or he wanted to be focused on. But if luxury facials are your thing, then the client isn't going to want that kind of dialogue. So, and Lisa's really good at that too. We'll start a personal dialogue and then we'll go into that treatment session so that we can educate them of what we're doing, why we're doing it, what to expect. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important in school is to get your license. And when I was teaching in 1991, and I'll show you the textbook I taught from. I mean, it, it looks like a phone book. 
there was no other resource. There was nothing. And now there's so many resources available and distributors and educators make them available. So if you want to become expert, you can do that at one in the morning and you can pull up a video. You can read so much and you want to read things that are substantiated, things that are really backed by science, not just opinions. I see a lot of clip and paste where people want to present themselves as an expert. And it really can be easy to go to someone else's page, take their information and, and paste that. But I never, ever wanted to be disingenuine. I always wanted to be great at what I was doing. So when my estheticians, graduates of mine will call and say, Miss Julie, I just, I'm really struggling. And understand skincare seasonal, especially if you're in the East Coast. And I would say, you get back to basics. You get back to essential skincare. You have to give a really good facial. You have to have great hands. You know, where I found that people wanted to get away and do things with, with tools, but people still love, it's like getting a haircut. They love the shampoo session. So being able to give a great facial and understanding why, why are you doing effleurage? Why are you doing topotment? Why are you applying that cream? People love to learn about that. That's why they're buying stuff from infomercials because they're, you know, fishing and they reel you in with the benefits and the why you're using it. And that's what I, I believe in a professional space too, that there's a lot of people that are doing things from their home and it has really taken away from the professional appeal of this industry, you know, so doing things in your home and it's not legal and it's done in a way where it's presented like it's a nice space or a boutique space, but it's not legal. That's not what this is intended for. Being a skincare specialist or an esthetician that practices professionally, it's about also practicing under the correct regulatory agency. And that's what makes our industry appeal to people because it really is a great way to become a professional in a niche in a very limited amount of time. But that doesn't mean that you can cut corners and do it home and not be licensed. So, so I'm with that. Mm -hmm. So Julie, I feel like, you know, the estheticians that are making it are the estheticians that bring value to the table. Right, so you are high value, you're an expert, you have education, you have skin in the game, like we said. Now, I get a lot of estheticians that say, I don't know, the price is too high, I need to like discount my facials because the people in this area don't spend that much money. Now let's go back to your area again. It's not that affluent. So what kind of advice would you give those estheticians that say that? Well. The interesting thing is when I first became an esthetician and this was the biggest mistake I made is I assumed that their budget was my budget. And I'll never forget, I worked in an affluent salon. So even though I live outside of this town, there's still pockets where people have disposable income and they like to treat themselves. They like to buy things. And again, I was, wrapping it up with the client. So I would always summarize the treatment and make suggestions and educate them on. And the woman said, well, I'd like to buy them. And I knew the cost of these products. And I said, well, you know, if I, we start with samples and she looked at me funny and said, what do, what do you mean? And I said, well, wouldn't you rather start with examples? The product's expensive. And she scolded me and she said, why would I want the samples? I can afford them. And that was the moment that in the textbook under your professional image and how to protect yourself as an esthetician, your job is to suggest product and put it in their hands. It's their decision. They want to purchase it or not. So I don't make the price the problem. You know, there's a value associated to who we are and what we do. So I do, we do price compare. We make sure that we're not too expensive and undercutting ourselves, but there are some people that they're just giving their services away and you really have to, like you said, have value to that. So when we are, we have a system, we go in, we greet our client, 
you know, we personalize and then we get to the treatment. And at the very end, when we summarize the treatment, we make suggestions for the right product and then just say, can we pull those together for you? You know, or Lisa used to say, how are you with product? What do you need? And I mean, literally the product companies we work with, they can't believe how tiny we are and how much <laughs> they, are, they fly out the door. And Mike, when Victoria first started working with me, she could not believe how the product just would fly out the door. So luckily my one distributor is within my town. So I know everybody in the warehouse because <laughs> I just go and pick it up. And they'll, some of the guys even say, are you, Ju you're Julie Stubler. We're constantly filling orders for you. I go, yeah, your product is amazing. So, but there's, we believe in it. And that's another thing too, is you have to believe in your product. You have to believe in it. And that's what I always say to my husband is, I know exactly how this product is going to perform. So when people start telling me about their skin, I'm already computing. And then I let it up to them where they want to start. I lay it all out, what I would suggest. And then, you know, it's also a comfort zone. I always say, do you want to walk, jog, or run? How quick do you want your results? Yeah. And also being like a high value esthetician, you also need to be like a high value presentation too. You know, like when I walked into your spa, everything felt high value. I mean, just your presentation, your look, your outfit, your, you had your glasses on, like, you know, that just those, you know, you really have to bring it. Like, because those clients like look at you like for hope, like, oh my God, I'm gonna look like Julie, you know? Well, if you're, it's true. I, I, when I was a teacher and I would stand in front of my classroom, I got ready every day. And there were students in the classroom who, also got ready every day and even though we had a dress code they dressed so beautifully to attend school and I knew right then and there that that effort that meant everything to me because they looked the way a skincare specialist or an esthetician should the girls that rolled out of bed and literally rolled out of bed I would think how would they feel if I rolled out of bed and stood in front of them in the clothing I fell asleep in and presented class. So there was something to that. And the first salon that I worked at as an esthetician was a very affluent salon. You know, people that were high income earners had disposable income and they looked at me, they looked at everything. You know, women have a way of just looking at you head to toe. So I had to sell my appearance to them. I had to carry myself. I had to watch how I spoke. They wanted to know where I lived. It was, it was interesting. You know, they were buying into me, not yet, but they were buying into me. So as I built that clientele, they knew me as an expert, but they did. They really looked at what I had on. They really made sure that everything worked together. So some people might think that's shallow, but you're in the beauty industry the beauty industry. So until you become that high expert that sought after, you may not put anything into yourself, but your reputation preceded you. But until that, you have to look the part. You got to do your best with your skin. You got to take care of it. And I remember this in one class I was, te um, I'm sorry, I had a classroom visit me. And the teacher that was teaching that class, she made her own holistic product. Not one student in that class used the product line that they were being taught with. They used the instructor's line. And I thought, oh no, oh no. <laughs> They're all gonna be influenced to not work with any distributor. You know, everything that this instructor, she kind of made oils and creams and things at home. and. I, I, I had to call the, the director of the school and say, are you aware that the students, you're educating them in this product line, she's influencing them in another direction. And that as a teacher, I, I was concerned with. But you do, you have to look the part. And I even tell my daughter, I always say to my daughter, people are gonna look at you. So when you go out in public, you gotta look the part. And she used to say, mom, you're so bougie. You are so bougie. 
And I go, and then she realized when she started working at the practice and she saw how these clients interacted with me, Lisa and Nicole, she realized that she had a certain posture to present. Mm -hmm. But my kids all did. They used to say, you're so bougie, you act so fake. But then when they realized that this space is of a professional expertise, they really had a lot of respect for it. But when they were young, they were kind of judgmental. <laughs> You know, you're, uh, you know, you have a lot of people saying, well, I just want to be me. And I just want to do my thing. Yes, you can be you, but you also have to know the game. And my dad always used to tell me, he's like, don't dress for you. He'd always tell me that. He's like, go brush your hair because you're dressing for other people. And he's like, that's how they're going to treat you. So I'm not saying wear the fanciest things but you do have to be presentable and look like a professional and Absolutely. you know you know like if you do your hair and makeup you just naturally feel more confident and i feel like that translates and radiates into more success well it's appropriate it's appropriate you know one of the positions i had was i was hired to do a startup and the owner invested a lot of money. I want to say it was about $2 million. And there was another startup I did in Bluebell PA, which is a very affluent. And if you did not look right, you were sent home because the clients have a certain level of expectation. So it's appropriate to look clean. It's appropriate to have your hair done, but I'll never forget. in doing an interview, the owner walked in on the interview. We were going to hire a girl for the front desk and she knew that if this is what she wore at her interview, she said, I'm not hiring her. She said it right in front of her. And I said, why? She said, in two weeks, she'll come to work with wet hair. And I think that is, she knew it. She knew that if she did not present herself in a certain way at that job interview, that she's gonna look less than that in two weeks. And guess what, goddess, she was right. That girl showed up with wet hair. I had to send her home, go dry your hair. Mm -hmm. You don't come to a you don't come to a $2 million uh, practice with wet hair. It's inappropriate as a receptionist. So there was a certain, you know, when you, if that's what, if that is what you're going to do and you think that it's about you, that's not what business is. Yeah. It's about presenting a certain level of professionalism mm -hmm. to clients that will develop a respect for what you practice. Yeah. So you, I, 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 I'm glad you touched on that because I, I do have a, a concern and a problem with that. I agree. And then it's also, if you're not a solo SD and you have a bunch of people working for you, like you really need to standardize also like who represents you too, you know? So I'll say a few years ago, I was doing a trade show event. Of course, I'm traveling here and there. So it's, it's just more affordable for me to find local talent, right? an esthetician and with today's filters everybody looks amazing um the girl shows up long story short she looks crazy and i go into panic mode so uh part of me is like of course I, i'm such an empath i'm such a softy like i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but i had three days of this trade show i had to do i looked at the girl i said she totally like falsify her pictures to me all I mean she had really bad acne I was like I'm selling an anti-acne product like this is gonna kill my trade show expense completely so I made that quick decision in my head I was like go with your gut and that's another reason like go with your gut if you feel that weird vibe with someone cut them off and I just said look I'm sorry that you traveled here today I'm not gonna need your services I didn't want to get into why but I said, look, I, I'm just going to need you to go home. And I paid her for that one day and I sent her home because for me, I'd rather lose that $200 for that daily rate than lose my whole business for three days. So it's really tough, but you've really got to surround yourself with the right people too. And, and you have to set the boundaries at your spa as the owner, right? Like, okay, if we're all going to have a uniform, we're not all look like this, then you're going to be firm about it because that is your reputation yes and lisa who's on here i lisa goes into this mode it's one of my favorite things to watch her walk in 
she comes in, this was when we were at the old practice and she scans that retail shelf and she is ready. She comes in there on a mission, you know, on the way to work, the Rocky thing must be playing in her head. And she walks in, she even has this beautiful voice. She'll walk in and she'll pull all the retail because she's already, <laughs> she's, happy. Um, she's ready to go. She puts the game face on. And when we're at work and as close as Lisa and I are at work, you would never know that we're that close because we make it about our clients. Even my daughter learned that. She learned this different poise and she had so much respect for these women she worked around because she saw the way we interacted, our dialogue, the way that we would talk to the clients and kind of finish the treatment, greet the next client, she even knew how to have the rooms presented in a certain way. It was very important. It was a standard we set, but the way we articulated, the words we used, there was a the certain dialogue we used in the med spa space that was appropriate and nothing else, anything other than that. Victoria came in one day and she had on like, like a denim look jeggings and I sent her home. And she'll, she said, are you kidding me? I said, no jeans, go home and they were denim looking. So that was just, again, in my old school training, denim was not appropriate. I didn't care if the jeans were $200, it's inappropriate, so. <laughs> and you know, it's also I, like, <laughs> sorry, Julie. Um, I was just gonna say also like the, just, you know, bring it to work, leave everything outside of work too. Like I'm all about like, you know, we all have tough lives, okay? like. For me, nothing is worse than someone complaining that they had a bad day and that's why they're acting a certain way. Like, I don't care. I didn't tell you my issues. I want you to keep yours at home and I need you to come and perform. So if you can't perform at all, you need to stay at home. But really, this is a time where you are here for the clients and bring your best game every single day because that's mm -hmm. contagious, you know? Well. Um, when I was offered, when I was still teaching and years ago, I then was asked to do an advanced program and I, I had the opportunity to work with, you know, an industry icon. And at the same time, I was asked to take over the skincare portion at this affluent spa. And the first thing when they called me, because I was educating estheticians for years and years and years, and I was placing estheticians in all of these up and coming, you know, salon spas. And the one place called, they said, no, we want to offer you the position. And the scaredy cat in me almost said no. I mean, literally my mouth formed to say no. And that little whisper said, well, I can meet with you. And that came out of my mouth to see what they had to offer. You know, so could I balance teaching and working with four children, with four kids, little kids? And I'll never forget, my husband said, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it? It's time to see if you can practice what you preach. And you believe he said that. So, and that, I got out the Milady textbook and read professional image and skin consultation. So everything to present that. And what I said to the manager is, if you allow me to create a schedule for you that I'll never have to call off, I can give you 100%. And this is what I would say to the working moms when I had an opportunity to bring a new person on board. I would say, you know, gotta give me the schedule where you can give me 100%. I don't care if it's two hours a week. But if you can give me 100% at two hours a week, I'd rather that than you try to give me 12 hours at 50%. Mm -hmm. And that was the philosophy I worked by. And that allowed me to balance being a mommy and to build a clientele as an esthetician. So it was always about that time management and having support system in place. And I was very lucky to have my husband and my parents help me when I needed to, but you know, when I see that women try to do it all, it's about managing your time and making sure that you don't fail at, you don't ever want to feel guilty that you're working too much. It's a balance. And sometimes you have to work. I understand that. But for those of you, if you're offered a position, don't take it 
unless you can give a hundred percent. It's just not fair to the client and it's not fair to the practice owner. So Julie, now that you're starting your partner list, right? A new place. How are you going to, so, you know, of course I have employees as well. And I always feel like employees need a place where they can excel and thrive, but be excited, you yeah. know? So there's factors to being excited. It's money. Like, how do you compensate the people that work for you? Like, you know, some people go to work for a franchise massage mm -hmm. facial place and they get like hourly. Like, how do you even maintain excitement working for a place like that? You know, so when I create the business I always want everyone to be happy working and also have like almost a vision and like something to step into too like another position or grow and so how are you going to do that with your new business well I'm affiliated with a physician so even though I lost my medical director um, having a wonderful reputation in the industry allowed me to connect with a physician who supervises my practice and I've been able to build a business model where I can bring independent contractors on as, and they have to be an established LLC. And with that being said, they also are responsible for their own client base. I can provide certain things, but they have to provide as well. So there's legalities to having LLCs. So they get a commission structure. So the commission structure is very handsome and Again, in the last phase, they had commission and there was never room for growth in that commission. So that was the first thing I said to my husband when we secured this place and we secured the medical director is I was so excited to offer the girls this space, but also more money because they deserved it. I, I knew who I really wanted to have come on board and I knew what they were capable of. So when I presented that to Lisa, she actually cried. And it was one of the most beautiful moments because she deserved more. And she knew I believed in her and that I cared about her and that I wanted her to know I valued her. Um, I've had many people reach out and ask me for positions, but I am not in a position to build people. I'm in a position to offer you space if you have a, an established clientele. It's very hard to do because now places are making people sign non-competes, but you know that it, so many people built books and then left. So now business owners have to secure their business. I understand that, but it's difficult. But I do, I offer them a commission, but they're responsible for their own scheduling. They're responsible for their services and building their clientele. And it's amazing. Lisa is one where she sees more. She sets a standard so high for herself. She is the biggest competitor among herself. And she writes down goals as far as what treatment she's going to do, what her target sales are. And it is a business hat. It's very important that estheticians understand that as much as you're a skincare specialist, you're a businesswoman. So there's a lot of shows that influence me as a businesswoman, and it's The Profit with Marcus Limonis. It's, um, what's the other show? I love it. I love Shark Tank, and I love to understand business models. There are certain Facebook groups that are for businesswomen and understand the business and the numbers, and that was not always an area that I was strong at. And at my last practice, my partner's... Um, his manager and bookkeeper really kept my nose in the books. So to be accountable for every penny and understanding how this money is reported. And that is something I can understand. This is what I'm scared is when this opens back up for us, if your business, if you struggled in that area, it may have been very hard for you to get help because you may not have had adequate bookkeeping. And, you know, I just had a business meeting with my husband the other day over coffee. And I said, I'm, I really need your help with the bookkeeping so I can focus on really rebuilding the new practice. And he said, I'll, I'll do it. So you really need to make sure you manage the books. And with that, then it's secure, it makes the girls coming on board feel secure. 
that I'm never going to unravel. And that's, I never ever want them to think that, oh my gosh, is Julie paying the bills? I need to, we, to are we gonna stay open? And coming to the new place, Lisa even said, is there anything you need help with, Julie? And I said, no, my goodness, you know, I'm a saver, not a spender. And thank goodness that I had that reserve. Who would have known this was gonna happen, Ghana? But I had the reserve to keep me afloat or my, my husband and I afloat and now shifting gears and realizing how you can monetize yourself. And that took belief and confidence. And I think you hit a point too, you know, it's, um, you know, it's okay. I think to get to the next level, you have to ask for help and you have to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. And you also have to like calculate, okay, what's making me money. So I have to put down, okay, what makes me money? I need to focus on that. Mm -hmm. I am not a bookkeeper. I definitely need help in that department <laughs> too, because you have to delegate that. And like you said, like some people are like, but I don't want to spend the money on social media. I don't want to spend somebody doing this and this, but do you know how many hours you just spent trying to figure it out? Right, you right. You could have been making all this money doing yeah. these services. So, you know, don't be afraid to spend a little money and you know, it's, you also get what you pay for, you know, especially yes. with employees, like give more incentives so you can get the right person. And I also say like, this is my sales thing. Like you, if you're a rock star, you're a rock star. Like no quota is going to make me work harder than what I already do every day. Like I'm just naturally a hard worker. Sometimes I work till midnight, one in the morning, but if you had a quota for me, it wouldn't matter. So those are the kind of people I want on my team too. So it's creating that super team, but yeah, definitely, you know, you're lucky to have your husband and he believes in you, you know, like that's something also, like if you're dating someone, I'm not going to try to ruin people's marriages here or relationships, but if they don't support you, like that's, that's a strain, like that's heavy when somebody doesn't believe in you and say, okay, like, oh, here she goes again with a new mm -hmm. idea. And I've mm -hmm. had those. You know, well, so. I, and I, I trust me, I'm not going to paint us perfect by any means, because we have a, we actually have our own um, acne soap line together and he's brilliant at formulating it. And then my brilliance is basically marketing it. And I'll tell you what, my poor dog probably has like a nervous condition from us yelling <laughs> or me throwing something at him. But we still, he has such a profound respect for what I've been able to do, you know, and he's, he's watched my career since I'll never forget when I had to go back to beauty school and I didn't have my cosmetology shoes. That's how strict you had to wear nurses outfits and we didn't even have a car. It was so cute. He went and walked down to the outlets and he bought me a new pair of shoes for beauty school. So those are just the kind things. So to have somebody believe in you, even if it's your best friend or somebody that just believes in you, it's amazing. The most important thing though, is you have to believe in yourself. So when I was kind of spiraling down through the shelter and the closing, my sister saw that and she reached out to me and she asked me to do a morning mindful yoga with her at 10 in the morning. And it was really sweet because I then realized my little sister was becoming my guru and she was really motivating me not to give up, to redirect my passion. And that's why she said, go teach people how to wash their face. So it was really funny. I give, I give Rona, not Corona, but I give my sister Rona a lot of credit for that wash your face movement. So. And again, I was very vulnerable. And I'll never forget, I came down, my husband said, who are you talking to? <laughs> I said, oh, I was doing a Facebook Live. He, he heard me having dialogue. He was thinking, who the heck? Is there people up in our bathroom? It was funny. But you do, you have to have a belief and you have to have a purpose and a passion and goals for yourself. And it's amazing. Even networking with other professionals. And I love that about my career. There's a lot of my estheticians that are in wonderful places and they will reach out to me just to, just to have a conversation with me. 
and they'll give me a lot of credit and it just warms my heart that I was part of their career, but I am in awe and how expert they've become and successful. And it's not always about the money. And I think that's another thing that being successful isn't about the money part. It's about building a established reputation in your community. It's not about looking like you have this great treatment room. It's about becoming a true expert in your community and people really acknowledging and respecting that. And I learned that difference in my 40s. So those of you that are a little younger, don't think it's about your wonderful treatment room. It's about establishing credibility within your community as an expert. Even if it's just giving a great facial or doing great eyebrows or doing great acne care, you can keep it simple, but just be a credible expert in your, in your community and you'll build from that. It's definitely thinking long-term, right? It's not like instant money right now like I have no. how do I make my business stay here and be here in 10 plus years you know so you're always thinking ahead too and you don't want to jump on fads too like there's so many fad things coming out like you don't want to be like oh let me because you know the classic things stay forever you know the classic facial you know like you've mastered oh, I watched it. it I've watched yeah. it go from being this very influenced European and then I watched it turn into the luxury spa and then holistic. I mean, I really saw the different breakouts, but at the end of the day, doing a really good facial that's safe and sanitary is why a lot of people, they start with you. So when they first come to you, there's a starting point and really understanding what their concerns are. You can break out into different recommendations, but within your realm of what you're expert with and becoming more educated and confident and truly understanding the treatment, then you get to that next level. But like you, you're establishing a long-term career for yourself. You're building, you know, yourself to, to have this legacy behind you, Gada. And I love that. Um, I love that my children have entered the space of the professional beauty and barber industry. My son will never give me one nod of credit ever, but <laughs> um, my daughter, she gives me a lot of credit and the girls that have influenced her career. But I, I want to be able to work till I can no longer walk or talk because I love this industry with all my heart. I love it so much. I know. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's evolving with and, and shifting, right? So you also have to shift with the times. I want to go back to you saying you have to believe in yourself, right? And we all have those days where we don't, we just don't, we go into panic mode, like, uh, I'm not like, you know, so no matter what your husband tells you in that moment, you're like, I'm a loser. I'm not going to make it. We're, we're we broke. You know, so I did, this is a suggestion for people that I thought was really, really good that um, I was listening to a podcast and this lady said, you know, you should put together a folder of everything you've done. So when you have those moments of doubt, you open that folder up and you look at all your accomplishments, all your transformations that you've done, like what, like how many years you've been doing this. And like, you know, honestly, like my mom actually does that for me. And I opened the little, you know, like it was the old school, like photo album with the peel off sticker that you put stuff in it. I don't know if you know that, um, yeah. you know, and she like put articles that I was in or like, you know, my awards and things like yeah. that from, you know, even paintings I've done that I was like, oh my God, like, I forgot about that. Like, those are things that you guys should start keeping and opening when you have those days and be like, oh my God, I'm freaking awesome. Like, and not in a way where you're cocky, but we need those days to be like, I'm awesome. I can do it. Let's go. And well, I, love, I love that because you need to reflect and that's what you're doing is reflecting. And sometimes I, I used to say this because there are people that I upset along the way in my career path. And I always wanted to make a knowledgeable decision and depending on situation sometimes it was a more emotional decision and I never meant to hurt anyone along the way 
Um, but there's people that will hurt you along the way. And I am so grateful. I am so incredibly grateful of those humbling, horrible moments where people were just mean to me or made fun of me behind the closed treatment door. And I used to use those emotional journeys to, to try to educate, motivate girls that wanted to get in this space so they understood it's not easy. This is humbling, you know, especially when you work for someone that wants to be an awful employer. But if you see a vision for yourself, you, that's noise. Don't let the noise interfere. But I love podcasts and I love motivational speakers. And one of my clients who I adore encouraged me to listen to Mel Robbins' book, which is the five second rule. And honestly, if it wasn't for that moment of listening to that seven days before my partner decided to give me the bomb, I wouldn't have had the tools. That book, and it just was so motivational and inspiring, really gave me the tools to believe. So, you know, you count down so that you don't react. And that was so essential. I, and I said to her, I cannot believe you suggested that to me, the timing of that. So I love to listen to the podcast that really helped to empower and encourage but sometimes you need that little bit of medicine to get you through maybe a funky moment. But I do. I, I like to ask other people, what do you listen to? I love going and when I'm cleaning, listening to education. And yesterday I was listening to a very advanced presentation. I listened to it 40, uh, 45 minutes, three times. Mm -hmm. I would have to go back and then like write that down so that I could internalize the information because I'm just so inspired by all the information available to us. And here I am in, at home cleaning out a room. And it just moved me to just, for my own knowledge, learn something and be able to articulate it. I love that part of being a practitioner is to articulate information. I agree. And like you said, you know, like I don't have any situation in my life where I'm not grateful for like I have no resentment to anyone or anything that's happened to me every resentment has to turn into gratitude because it's opening a door for your new spa like you're you deserve this new spa Julie like you know so anybody that does you wrong or says anything it's like thank you like thank you for putting me in that situation to, mm -hmm. to go a different route because I so I'm sorry, but I, it was, it was so painful because you build something and somebody takes it from you. Even the name, I wasn't allowed to keep my name, but it's amazing that the right people step up and you can't doubt yourself. And they helped guide me to reestablish this business. So I don't even have the paperwork finished because the pandemic happened while all the state offices were off. And it never stopped me because I believed that it's still going to, we're going to be fine. And my husband would say that, this is the best thing that ever happened. And I started to feel that. So um, if it were a year ago, it wasn't the timing. So to lose your practice, you know, the money that I made a month was gone, Nagata. It was gone. It was so scary not to have that income coming in and so, and then taking money from our savings to put it into a new business, my husband was never scared. And it's funny, I believed I had this power stick and I felt so empowered of confidence and belief and excitement. And like I say, it was a passion project and it was all about the timing. So I wouldn't, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that that's what happened. And I you learn a lot about what you're made of. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, when I had ugly things happen to me, give me three days, 72 hours. I think I gave myself four. And that next day, you know, we were looking and looking for a place mm -hmm. that we could have a, a new practice. It's like you have to focus that energy and direct it to a place of what can we do now? Like, let's execute, you know, and also like um, network and put yourself in a network of other business minded people too. Mm -hmm. you know, like make sure that, you know, like Julie, I need your help with this. What did you do when you did this? You mm -hmm. know, so 
you know, I have a monthly check-in with a few beauty coaches too, you know, so get involved in some of the groups and people that are going to inspire you too, because when you're isolated, you're going to get into your own head and you want to, you want to be active and busy and keep talking mm -hmm. because the more you talk, more ideas are going to pop up. Even when somebody's just talking, like you just talking, I'm getting a million ideas. So, um, but Julie, like if some, I think everybody should follow Julie. If you're on the Facebook live stream now, I tagged Julie. So please follow her, watch her Facebook live tonight. And Julie, I think you should do more education. I think you would be an inspiration to the industry. I think you're like a hidden gem. And that's why I really brought her on today because I really want everyone to know who you are. And I love that. I, I have to tell you, when I walked away from the classroom, to build my last med spa. It was such an emotional day for me because I love the classroom. I love educating. And a lot of people in positions as consulting, I kind of find it interesting that a lot of people in certain positions aren't in the treatment room. And when I listen to certain educational things, I was listening to one yesterday, not one of them were in the treatment room. So I always say that it's hard to take advice from people that don't work inside the treatment room and understand the different levels of businesses from day spa operations to small, small little solo shops or the little med spa space. And I get it. I had the blessing of doing startups all over the country when the esthetician became such a commodity to a practice. So I, I could be salty sometimes. You say, what do they know? They're not even in a treatment room. But I understand what the client needs. I understand how that business model should be positioned. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity because I, I would, I really see myself venturing and really becoming more of a mentor or a coach for people that are trying to be professional and establish themselves as an expert because there is, there's a series, there's steps to that. It just doesn't happen overnight. And I, I get it. Mm -hmm. I know how to do it. So Julie, if they want to contact you, what's the best way if they want to? Um, thank you. So if they want to contact me, I do have a webpage. It's called thebeautybuff.com. And you can just hit contact me on there. It's a new page. Um, you can also go on my Facebook page, which is Julie Hunsberger Stubler. So again, in my community, people I grew up with knew me with my maiden name. And you can, you know, request me as a friend there. But you can contact me through thebeautybuff.com and... You know, I'm looking to start a podcast where I'm working with a lot of industry professionals. So I'm really excited about that opportunity too, because I think that many business or professionals want to share their tips and their story of how they've gotten established. And that's where you can visit me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited to see your next chapter. Really, I'm excited to see where you're going to take this. And I'm lucky to have you as one of my Skin Buddy rock stars for over three years now. And yeah, I, lo I love you. I love you. I want to share you with everybody. And that's how I feel about a lot of our clients. Yeah. I know. You. Well, you're very genuine. And I mean, for the moment you walked into the practice and moment coming into your home and having that hospitality from your mom and her feeding me and just meeting your family, you come from a great place and you're an asset to this industry, Gata. And Thank you so much for that opportunity through this pandemic and making it available to us because it gave us a purpose. It made me feel like a skincare specialist. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you saying that. And you guys, I just want you to know, like even on the days where I'm like so doubtful, I just have to turn on the Instagram stories of my skin buddy and just watch all the reposts and watch everybody loving it. And it just, it gives me that extra like nudge to keep going. So I think we need that. Like we need everybody's support to work. Teamwork makes a dream work. Like we can't do it alone. We need no. everybody. Well, that's what I don't, and trust me, I don't think I'm better than the other estheticians because Oprah said that one time she she has her own niche and I know what my space is and I hats off to the estheticians that are established in my community because this is not easy to get established it's not and we have a method and a purpose and we are so committed to our profession and I really hope that if 
people really want to become the professional. They understand it's, it's not an overnight thing, but it, it, there's a journey to it. So, you know, people like you that give the opportunity to aspiring estheticians, skincare specialists, they don't realize how valuable you are. I get it. And you're so, so I appreciate that. Thanks, Julie. Well, we got a lot of work to do today, so we are going to end it now. But we're going to have the replay. Um, if you guys uh, subscribe to the and register, we're going to have the replay. Julie, I'm going to send you the video so you can share it with everybody you know and upload it on your website. Um, okay. And it's the beauty buff, B U F F dot com. Mm -hmm. So excited. Okay. Anything yeah. else, Julie, before we leave? No, just love what you do. If you honestly don't love this, find out what it is that you do love and it, it'll never feel like a day's work. And I, I've always felt that way since 21, when I stepped into that classroom, I felt alive and I was a young mommy. My husband then worked night shift and it was a long day for me. I worked from nine to five thirty. went to school six to 10, went grocery shopping with the sleeping baby, you know, at 11 o'clock at night. And I couldn't wait to do it the next day because my life had a purpose. I love this industry. And I feel that way every day. And if you don't feel that way, meditate, think about what it is you love and redirect yourself. Because it'll just be so effortless. I agree. I agree. People can tell if you're in it or you're not. And if you're not, you're just not going to succeed. And there's no secret formula. There's, uh, I mean, the formula to it is just persistence, hard work, and passion all into one. And mm -hmm. you're going to win if you keep at it, right? Like it's and, not. And believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe. And if you don't believe in yourself, then maybe again, clear your head, go for walks, confide in someone that loves you. And again, that's what my sister and I will always be grateful for that moment where she extended up all the olive branch because she saw me getting funky. So just believe too. Yeah. So Julie, um, are you going to go live tonight? Oh yeah. I, I have a lot of makeup on. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you guys tune in tonight to Julie's. I'm going to watch it. What time, so what time are you going on Eastern time? I'll go on 9.45. So 9.45 this evening. Okay, you guys, so get, get your snacks, watch Julie, wash her face. So um, can you give us like any um, sneak peeks on what you're going to do tonight? Have you thought about that yet or not yet? Yeah, so tonight it'll probably be, um, I'll do a double cleanse. So you'll also see me use two devices because I took a device from the treatment um, center from my med spa and I do it at home. Um, so you'll see me do a double cleanse and then you'll see me infuse all the different nighttime products I have. And I, I give an explanation. So I try to make that explanation informative and I back it with, you know, the science behind it. So people know that I'm not just pulling it out of the air, but I really walk through that. I ask for engagement. So I'll ask questions and people say hi. And I, I love that. But yeah. I just you're so interactive. You're so cute. And, you know, I told Julie this over the phone. I was like, you are like the perfect mix of just natural, cute, but you throw in these big words in there that be like, I'm, so, I'm a smart uh, esthetician and uh -huh. you know your stuff. So I'm excited to watch you tonight. And I thank you for, for doing this. Like, I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Gada. See you, everybody. Thank I'll you see guys. you tonight. Wash your face. How about that? <laughs> yeah. See you guys. See you later.